Northern Australia. Protected by law, the saltwater croc population has swelled nearly 5,000% over the last 30 years to as many as 150,000. They are man-eaters, and no stretch of water anywhere is safe. On a tidal river, this 12-footer is looking for its next meal. The diet consists usually of, of fish and crabs, crustaceans, small mammals, that kind of thing. But an 18-foot crocodile can drag down a buffalo if he really wants to. Although he normally hunts in rivers, today he heads out into the open sea. People have seen saltwater crocodiles swimming past oil rigs and, and past boats just in the middle of the ocean. And so what's this crocodile doing? It's just swimming from one point to another. On Thursday Island, at the northern tip of Queensland, 37-year-old police sergeant Jeff Tanswell and his wife Jane, also a trained police officer, are hitting the water for a day of fun in the sun. My entire life I've been brought up by the water. So we've always been brought up um, with boats and diving and fishing, and that's just second nature. If we go fishing or we'd just go out and have a look and jump out on a reef. Hi! Hey. Hi. Hi. Today they plan on doing some spear fishing with their friends Amanda and Dave. They head towards the remote Adolphus Islands, an hour away. We hadn't been there before, so this is going to be another opportunity for us to explore. The ocean around here is dangerous. We're a bit, I guess, aware of the possibility of sharks being in the water. It's something that's uh, always stored in the back of your, your head. Let's just enjoy the ride, but let's be aware. Keep an eye out for a shark. The last thing on Jeff's mind is running into an aggressive saltwater croc. All I knew was that crocodiles uh, inhabit the coastline and they need to go from river to river to river. And they do not go out to sea. And that was what I was brought up with. But he's wrong, dead wrong. A wandering killer croc is also headed to the Adolphus Islands on a collision course with Jeff's party. They pull into a coral reef and scout for any signs of predators. We were making sure that there was no sharks or anything in the water that we that was dangerous, but we didn't see any sharks. If there's going to be a shark, he's going to be patrolling the deep water. So I'm not going to go there. I'm going to take the safer option, and I'm going to go in closer to the coast. Amanda and Dave are the first ones in. Because they're entering unfamiliar waters, Jeff asks his wife to stay on board. You have to leave someone on the boat just for safety. If you catch a fish, if it bleeds, you don't want to have fish blood in the water, it could attract sharks. So if they catch a fish or crayfish or something, they just hold it up and I start the boat, go over. Jeff enters deep in an alien world where he is both the hunter and the potential prey. You can see the, all the little uh, colourful fish dancing around in, in amongst all this brightly lit coral. I saw the, the other two diving with us. They started heading out a bit wide. And I remember thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable diving out to where the coral edge is, where it drops off into the deeper water, because sharks could come and go. Sharks are not the problem. The hungry 12-foot saltwater croc is closing in. I remember a little voice in the back of my head going, there could be other big things out here. The giant croc quietly stalks Jeff and his friends. It's 
breeding season, and like all crocs, he's more aggressive than usual. Jeff heads up for air. I just thought I'd been hit by a boat. The fear that a predator instills in its prey is it's, it's bottomless. No matter how fast you move, if a crocodile's head is half a meter from you and it strikes, you cannot possibly get away. Jane can't quite make out what's going on. And it all happened within a matter of split second. I remember staring at that bit of water going, did I just see what I saw or is that my imagination? A crocodile clamps down on Jeff's head. And I become aware of this pressure on my head, this, this, this crushing pressure on my head. The crocodiles have got the strongest jaw muscles of any animal that we know for their size. They've got about 66, sometimes 68 teeth in their jaws. They'll puncture through, fe through flesh, they'll go through shell, and they'll even go into bone. Jeff is dragged down with his head ripped open. He's bleeding heavily and running out of air. He's just gone down with no splash, no screaming, no kicking. Jeff? I had no feeling of, of the water, the temperature, sounds, everything, sight, everything was gone. They've got the power just to shut down your entire system and you don't have a say in it. It was a, a mixture of just horror as well as just total disbelief. You're on a, on a remote tropical coral island. You, you're not looking for a, a crocodile. Jane starts the boat to stop it drifting. She has absolutely no idea that her husband below is being drowned by a giant croc. I could feel by my neck muscles that he's pulling me down to the sea floor by, by my head. That is one of the things that a crocodile will do if it wants to overpower its prey. Most animals can't hold their breath for anything like as long as a crocodile can. Jeff knows he can't stay under for more than a couple of minutes. I'm trying to stop what's going on, but I, I can't. He's, he's just too big, too strong. I remember kicking madly with my fins. You're just in overload. I don't know if it's adrenaline or what. It's all your senses trying to work overtime to save you. And then a miracle. I remember seeing the jaws release and the sudden burst of light, and I'm just shocked to the surface. I saw his head come up and him blow the water out of his snorkel. Jeff has no idea where the croc is and when it might bite again. Well, what was going through my head was his big block head coming back up and, and grabbing my legs. And then just behind his head, I thought I saw something moving. Killer croc surfaces inches away, closing in on his prey. I can feel the warm uh, blood running down the side of my face. He's got the teeth, he's got the scales, he's, he got, he's got the claws, he's got everything. You have nothing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I just, it was the most unexpected thing. I remember looking at this thing and then the brains kicked into gear going, we've got to try and survive this. The croc slowly circles. It sizes up Jeff from every angle. It could rip him apart at any moment. If the prey is large, then it will produce what's known as the death roll. And then it spins its entire body. If a crocodile grabs me on the arm and starts to spin, the weak point here is at the elbow or at the shoulder. And that's where it will dislocate. We all know that these things come back to finish you off. Jeff realizes he may only have minutes to live. Oh. 
Police Sergeant Jeff Tanswell has been brutally attacked by a saltwater crocodile in Queensland, Australia. And now his wife, Jane, also a trained officer, is desperate to save him before the croc finishes him off. Straight away, you just think, this is it. Someone's gonna die here. I just had to try and get him out of the water. Jeff's frantic movements are only making matters worse. He needs to get back to the boat before the reptile returns for more. If you splash and splash and splash, the croc can feel that, it can hear it, and it's, it's more likely to attract it back to the place. Stuck my head in the water a couple of times, just trying to see where the hell he went. Next minute, I had the boat beside him, and I was helping him in the boat from the left-hand side of the boat. I don't know how I pulled him out of the water. I think it was just a pure adrenaline. Open your eyes. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm right here, OK? Concerned about their friends, Jane swings the boat around to the other side of the bay and finds Amanda and Dave unharmed. But the monster croc is still somewhere below. Everyone may be safely in the boat, but Jeff's wounds are serious. I got a puncture hole in, in my left cheek. I got a laceration on, on my left temple. Uh, the left ear was torn. I got lacerations on, uh, behind both my ears. Where the, where the teeth went in, and scratches on, on, on my back where his claws went in. It's essential Jeff gets to the hospital as quickly as possible, but they are a good hour away from the coast. He could have a brain injury. He could have some sort of compression on his brain. He could have a stroke. He could also be infected by the croc. Well, his teeth are covered in mud, covered in bacteria. It's a breeding ground for bacteria. If that crocodile then bites you, it drives those bacteria deep into your flesh and it can cause a much bigger problem than the bite itself. Crocs kill as many as 200 people a year. And right now, Jeff looks like he might join that gruesome club. We got to the hospital and went straight into the emergency room. I had all my wounds scraped and washed out, which was <laughs> quite painful. And then they microsurgery my ear and stitched everything back together. He owes his life to Jane's quick rescue and pure luck. Certainly, if it wanted to kill him, it would have. Jeff knows all too well how close he came to death. And there is nothing as terrifying as realizing that, that this thing is going to come along and eat you, and you can't do a thing about it. No further attacks were reported in the Adolphus Island region that summer, most likely. The saltwater crocodile returned to the coast and headed upriver.